am standing in the middle of the Redskins Play 60 obstacle course where the kids are getting pretty active, showing off their football skills. That's just one of the many activities happening right now inside the Walter E. Washington Convention Center. You face the Indianapolis Colts, a team that's leading the AFC South, high-powered offense. How do you match that intensity? You just don't. You know, teams are going to have success. You guys are coming off a big win against the Tennessee Titans, but now it's Dallas week. Totally different animal. What's that like? Um, it's a division opponent. I mean, uh, obviously, they know us and we know them. The Redskins have won four straight games coming into the playoffs, three of which on the road. How do you think they match up against Aaron Rodgers and this Packers team? Moving along to the Saints at the bottom of the NFC South, 4-8, and eight, giving up almost 32 points per game. That's good for worst in the league. And that pass defense has been exposed time and time again. Can you fix this team? Now, I'm going to take the Olivia Pope hat off because Olivia can't help this. <laughs> the Redskins and Cowboys rivalry has been standing for 54 years. And, Doc, you've had your fair share. Tell us your favorite memory. Alfred, you guys struggled against the Buccaneers in the air, but a strong running game, 96 yards for you. How important is this running game to the offense? Are we going to see the swaggy dance prime time Monday night? I hope so, man. Hopefully I make some good plays when we're still in the game and I'll be able to go out there and dance. <laughs> Time to play a game of over under with our resident analyst, Louis T. I've got six questions for you, Louis. Starting off with the Bengals tight end, Tyler Eifert. He has 12 touchdowns through 11 games. He sat out last week due to a neck injury, but assuming he plays the remaining four games, over under 16 touchdowns for Tyler Eifert. No doubt that the defense has been amazing all season long, finishing first in the league, allowing a league low 283 yards per game. Mm -hmm. And Peyton Manning doesn't have to be the Peyton Manning that we're accustomed to, but how much does he have to do? Lots of talk about the leadership in the locker room. Deshaun Jackson comes forward and says that he wants to be a leader. Talk a little bit about that. Colt McCoy is officially your starting quarterback, had 400-plus yards against the Colts. How confident are you that he can lead this offense? I'm very confident. So I'm here with Derek and Deja, who are going to show me exactly what it is you do in this game. It's called Fitness Scholastics. So I roll the dice, and they're going to demonstrate what exercises I land on. Moving along to our early Sunday game, the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Seattle Seahawks, a team that many believe is the most dangerous team in the NFL. They've won six of their last seven games heading into the playoffs. They beat up on the Cardinals in Week 17, 36-6. to Is this, in fact, the most dangerous team? And the NFC East, the Giants still ahead, 5-5, five and five, Redskins 4-5, and five, and the Eagles 4-6, and six, still a tight race. Mm -hmm. Do you envision any of these teams separating themselves. The Carolina Panthers showing their resilience, the lone undefeated team. Now, I got to give you your credit. You did say they would be the last one standing, but they've got four games left on the schedule, two against the Falcons, against the Giants, and then the Buccaneers. Can they stay undefeated? You had no interceptions, four, four touchdowns, touchdowns <laughs> a perfect pass rating, yes, 22 yes. for 25 and 324 yards. If you can get this kind of game from Kirk Cousins or semblance of this kind of game from Kirk Cousins moving forward, how good can this team be? Things are getting festive here at Macy's for the Make-A-Wish Foundation Believe launch where four wish kids are gathered around with their families to deck out these gingerbread houses. Doc, I'm catching up with defensive end Jason Hatcher, key component of that defensive front. What do you guys need to do against Seattle to get a win? Because of all the injuries this team has endured throughout the season, you've kind of had to have a next man up mentality. Talk about the ability of the second and third string guys to step up. Joining me now is Trent Murphy. Trent, you guys had a game yesterday, but you made sure to make it out here bright and early to support the kids. Why is that so important to you? I'm here with Redskins nutritionist Rob Skinner, the guy who takes care of all the players. <laughs> Tell us how to take care of ourselves. Bills, three and four. They were expected coming into the season to be one of the best defenses in the league, but they're giving up almost 25 points per game. Sink or swim? They're going to sink, I'm afraid. <laughs> when the Falcons were playing well, it was that running game that was a driving force. Devontae Freeman, now just 47 yards per game in the last four games. Mm -hmm. They've got to do a better job of establishing the run. 